Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the different types of radiation. And what we're going to look at is describing the ionizing radiation in terms of the nuclear change that occurs during each type of radiation. We're going to talk about the ionizing power of each type of radiation. And we're going to talk about the range of them. And we're going to talk about the range specifically in air uh, as an example. And then what we're going to do to finish off is we're going to actually explain the differences between them. So why does one have a higher ionizing, ionizing power? One, why does one have a shorter range? And we're going to do that in terms of the particle properties. So let's make a start. There are three main types of ionizing radiation that we talk about. We talk about alpha, we talk about beta, and we talk about gamma. So beta has actually got a minus missing from it. Its full name is actually beta minus. And the reason for that is because there's actually a fourth type of radiation called beta plus. But we don't really meet that in this specification because it involves antiparticles. So three types of ionizing radiation, alpha, beta, gamma. That's what we need to know. OK, so we talked about ionizing radiation. So what is ionization? Well, it's the process of adding or removing electrons from an atom. But in the context of nuclear physics, ionizing radiation actually just removes electrons. We're not going to be talking about adding electrons to atoms. So you'll see that ionization, I've put it here in purple. And the reason I've put it in purple is because it needs to go into the definition section of your booklets. Uh, so make sure you do that whenever you see anything in purple. It'll either be going in the definition section or into the equation section. OK, so now we know what ionization is. What is ionizing power? Well, ionizing power is the number of atoms a certain type of radiation can ionize in a given distance. So we would describe alpha radiation in terms of the number of ionizations per centimeter it can cause. OK. Finally, what when we say range, what do we mean by that? So range is the distance a radioactive particle can travel before it runs out of energy. And the reason it would run out of energy is because as it travels, it's causing ionizations as it goes along. And each time it ionizes something, it loses some energy. And eventually all of its energy will be transferred to other atoms and it can't cause any ionizations anymore. OK. So what system do we use to describe nuclei? Because I said we were going to talk about the different types of radiation in terms of nuclear change. So we describe nuclei using three quantities. We talk about proton number, the number of protons inside the nucleus. Uh, you might hear that especially in chemistry referred to as atomic number, but we call it proton number. We have neutron number, number of neutrons inside the nucleus. And we have something called nucleon number, just the number of particles inside the nucleus. So it's proton number plus neutron number. And in chemistry, you might be used to seeing that called the mass number or the relative atomic mass. OK, so that's how we describe nuclei. So we often write those numbers in the form of nuclide notation. So what you can see here is the nuclide notation for one of the isotopes of carbon. So you can see this is the nucleon number or the mass number. This is the proton number or the atomic number. And if we want to figure out what the uh, neutron number is, all we have to do is the nucleon number minus the proton number. So in this case, we can see that there are eight neutrons inside this particular nucleus. So that's how we figure that out. So carbon comes in a few different what we call isotopes. So these three are all carbon because they all have six protons. But you can see that they all have different numbers of neutrons. So the one on the left has eight and the one on the right has six and the one in the middle has seven neutrons. So these are what we call isotopes. So the most stable is the carbon 12, as it's known. So the 12 refers to the nucleon number. And so that's the most common one we find. So uh, if we think about carbon in the atmosphere, carbon in coal, almost all of it is this carbon 12. But there is actually some carbon 14 and 13 as well. And actually carbon 14 we can use to work out the age of things, which is very useful. 
Okay, so the reason we don't find too many of carbon-14 and 13 is because they're radioactively unstable, so they decay into other elements. Okay, so let's have a more definition of isotope we can add to our definitions. So isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. So another example that's quite common you come across is uranium. Uranium actually has loads of different isotopes, but these are the two most common. So 238 is the most abundant. So if you go to a mine and you dig up some uranium, uh, you'll probably dig up uranium oxide. Uh, you'll find it's mostly uranium 238. The one we want for power plants, or if you're interested in building bombs, uh, it's in there too. You want uranium 235. So you might hear on the news about the enrichment of uranium. So in countries like North Korea and Iran, that's technology they're trying to develop. And that's the process of increasing the percentage of uranium 235. Because if you want to make nuclear weapons, you need a much higher percentage 235. And that's why it's such a controversial process. Okay, so those are isotopes. So let's just get on to actually what we described earlier, describing the three types of radiation in terms of nuclear change, ionizing power, and range. So alpha, the nucleus loses two protons and two neutrons, and we sometimes call that losing a helium nucleus. So essentially it just kicks out two protons and two neutrons as one particle. And this particle has very high ionizing power, so it can cause a lot of ionizations every centimeter it travels through a material. And consequently, that means it has a very short range because it loses energy very quickly. Beta, the nucleus undergoes a change. So one of the neutrons will turn into a proton and that will emit an electron into the surroundings. So the neutron that turns into a proton, that stays inside the nucleus. The electron is, however, emitted. The electron is not as ionizing as alpha, but it still has quite high ionizing power, which is why it can travel a meter in air. So it can travel further because it's not as ionizing. Gamma is just the emission of energy. So we're not changing any particles. We're not even emitting any particles. We're just sending out a burst of electromagnetic radiation. And this radiation has very low ionizing power and so consequently has a really large range in air. And you'll see this um, pattern in any material. So the, the range might be a different number, but alpha always has the shortest, gamma always has the longest in any given material. OK, so those are our kind of classifications. So we can express the nuclear change using a general decay equation, and we're going to add these three to our equations section at the front of the booklets. So as I said, uh, in alpha, we lose two protons and two neutrons. So our nucleon number has gone down by four, and our proton number goes down by two. And the particle produced, an alpha particle, is the same as a helium nucleus, which is why it says HE for helium. Beta, we said a neutron turns into a proton. So that's why the proton number has gone up by one, because we've got one more proton than we had before. But protons and neutrons are both nucleons, so our nucleon number hasn't changed. And the other thing that's emitted is this electron that is produced as well. And you can see that what happens is on the left and right hand side of the equation, we'll see the nucleon number and the proton number overall stays the same number. Gamma, as we said, there's no change in the particles, so you'll notice the same element before and after the uh, decay. And we've produced a gamma radiation which doesn't have any mass charge or anything, so that's why it's got zeros. Okay, so let's actually talk about the factors that affect the range of radiation. So there's actually two. So one we've already seen is ionizing power. The higher the ionizing power, the shorter the range, because you're ionizing a lot more particles in that every centimeter, so you lose your energy more quickly. The other thing that can affect your range is the initial energy. So not every alpha particle is emitted with identical energy. Some are ident emitted with more, some are emitted with less. And if you're emitted with more energy, you can travel further through the material before you've lost all your energy. 
Okay. What factors actually affect the ionizing power of radiation? Well, essentially, this is where the characteristics of or the properties of the particle come into play. So there's four that can really affect it. Size, the like, our volume, if you like, uh, the charge, the mass, and the speed at which it's traveling as well. So if we can increase any of those four, we're going to have higher ionizing power and therefore a shorter range. So let's have a look at our particles in terms of these things. Speed, because they get emitted with a range of different speeds, so we can't be conclusive about that. But these ones, we can be uh, definitive and say exactly what they are. So alpha, the, the thing that's emitted is two protons and two neutrons, which has, compared to the others at least, a large volume. Obviously, it's tiny because uh, nuclei are minute but compared to the other two it's large uh, it's two protons so it has a relative charge of plus two and it has a mass it's of 66,800 times 10 to the minus 31 uh, so it's a very small mass yes but it's a lot bigger than the other ones so beta we talked about already is the emission of an electron the other change happens inside the nucleus an electron is compared to an alpha particle, small. Uh, its charge is only minus one, because it's just one electron, so it's got a smaller charge, and its mass is considerably smaller as well. We can see it as a, a factor of a thousand smaller. Gamma, uh, we can't really talk about its size because it's not a particle, it's a wave of radiation, so I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, radiation doesn't have a charge and it doesn't have a mass. So you can see based on these numbers that we'd expect alpha to be the most ionizing or to have the highest ionizing power, which it does, so that makes sense. And we'd expect gamma to have, have the least ionizing power, which it does. So it kind of matches up with what we know about the types of radiation.